check it out. Choke no joke, learn from mistakes. DJ S and S the great. It ain't no telling, you be a first time felon. No telling, when you be a first time felon. It ain't no telling, you be a first time felon. No telling, when you be a first time felon. Best day of my life, no sleep all night. Broke day for weeks, my cash was right. My combo tight, take our loot, unite. 23 hour shifts, had to see loot like Mike. Cash, lovely, yeah, Dougie. How could this day get so ugly? Wifey about to pop, like some bubbly. Yo, doodles, now moss, you really bug me. Felt like a star, cop first car. Get up with the guard, what it is, baby, pa. Get about the cop a van, get up with our mans. Before we reached our low spot, toes blam. Underwear, what happened? Discussing the clapping. It wasn't loud, ain't shit gonna happen. Me being stupid, instead of getting they moving, this nigga kept chefing, like the woo one. Then we heard a knock, no one knew what his spot. Since niggas in the spot, since niggas not. Ain't no telling, you be a first time felon. No telling, when you be a first time felon. It ain't no telling, you be a first time felon. No telling, when you be a first time felon. It ain't no telling, you be a first time felon. No telling, when you be a first time felon. I'm in the precinct, all damn even It's good cop, bad cop, shit got me steaming No, I was caught, I ain't give a fuck Had jokes like the usual suspects line up Spooked times up, came back fuck Shirt wrinkled up, my pigs rough me up Time's up, heard them clink of the cuffs Niggas was so deep, they had to call on the bus Everybody the jacks outside waiting on us Like ghetto celebs, our cells ain't plush Five in the book and gave a whooping. He never forget. They gotta be split. Up in the courtroom, they causing ruckus. Everybody in the jacks waiting on us. Try to bail us out. That thought got thrown out. Bill one, so I couldn't be half in the gal. Hopped out. That's what first fell in the bow. Back on the bus. Right is the row. Wifey in the courtroom crying out. We love y'all with tears running in their mouth. No telling you be a first time felon. No telling when you be a first time felon. It ain't no telling you be a first time felon. No telling when you be a first time felon. Choke no joke. Learn from mistakes. Keep chasing that paper. You're going to catch a case. DJ S and S the great. Choke no joke. Sticky choke no joke. We're in the building. We're still coming in. I see y'all. Choke no joke. Yeah. You know what Choke it is. Choke no joke. You know what it is. Let's go. Let's go. 2020, rich niggas, money funny We got killer bees and I lost my honey My little sex master, yeah she was a distraction To my mathematics, then corona happened The government capping on what's really happening Rock Nation signing niggas that's out here ratting And Jay's the captain of the ship? Ain't this a bitch you keep his sign and snitch? We lost Andre and Rich, life's a bitch Can't have a funeral, no matter if you rich or poor Overpopulated at morgues Funeral homes, bodies all on the floor No food in stores, no me no more These the last days if you never prayed Have faith, all sort of illicit days Yo, it's tough when you see Puff rock a hoodie with his baby mama hanging from a cross, you lost. Damn, you told the CEO on the gram he was a handsome man. Oh. That's sexual harassment in front of millions of fans. You made five on the scram like Sunday Letitia. Uh -huh. Joseph don't leave, Mary and Jesus. Uh -huh. Sides, self-pleasing, some sneak thieves. If we were kids, you call them flat leavers. They use you, don't need you. It's birth you, they see ya. Cross you, then be ya, curve you, and flee ya Niggas wanna be you, until they see you They idolize you, like you in the case Nigga, you know who got punched in the face In the A on stage, or any place A nigga like me, never retire like Mace 
and don't even care if the church is the escape. Last real nigga alive amongst your face. Y'all big bad, no frost in all my face. You can't come out, Epstein flight log is out. And tell us what that spirit cooking about. Head to head with a satanist and niggas in doubt. The power of the dark side block me out. That's why I'm blacking. Get it in any sport trick. That's why you the non factor. 6 9 keep acting like you ain't acting. You wasn't flagging in the court yapping. That tough guy on the ground was just blabbing. Nigga, you capping. I'm the king of New York. At y'all niggas, I'm laughing. <laughs> Joke, no joke. We here now. You know what it is. Eat a wall, stand up. Joke, no joke. You already know. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Who stepped in? Kaboom. Said Fred stepped in the room. Chicago. Bruno from the Charlotte now. It be the S A S H I T T, the shitta in that building. <laughs> As you can see, too big for skinny jeans. What's good? What's good? Okay, Tasha, what up? What up? Silk team. Yeah, yeah, they plotting on the boy. They plotting. They plotting. Let them, they plotting. Let them plot. Let them plot. They not nah, no, no. Now I think I know, now I know, go on. Huh? You know, I think I know what go on. You know, be careful. You step on, on top on the hot stepper. I stay ready, man. Okay? Me now want to know rump with your boy. Me now want to rump with you. He coming in. This show right here. Is uh this is gonna be one for you. You might want to call your friends up because this is one that's going. I I think I think I got it all together now. I got it all together now. Choke those jokes. You already know. Let's go out the gray go. Not pitching in the hood, uh, and I really don't think I could uh, go back to selling crack and stashing them packs in my ass. I maintain weekly money the same, and now nah, I don't go through them games. Niggas testing my brain with them triple beans filled with change. Pot crack, grams in the drain, mm, getting yeah. hit with the fake exchange, like baking soda flour after being on Broadway for hours. Getting knocked, being back at start. Uh, niggas testing if I got hard. Yeah. Pushing me to pop some shots. Just stop the ball before the start. I'm out the game. Old lady with the binocs. Give description to cops. Why they try to tear us apart with that good cop, bad cop. I ain't going for the game, he ain't tell you a thing. Your partner's with him, saying the same. You can tighten them cuffs till you see veins. Stop fucking yanking them chains. The they might fuck you if you ain't sane. And nigga never sniff cocaine. Uh -huh. And I don't care what game or part of the error you claim. Cause the game. Gray Scarface, you must be insane. Nigga, Tony fucked the boy's day. His right hand man, he's slain to get his back blown out the game. On Kane, do it on the low, let nobody know. No pillow talk to hoes. And if he step on your toes, don't bust a blame. Cause everybody will know, or get out the game. They say that change is good. It's a lot of stress in the hood, and I know if you could, you would. Get out the game, but you stuck in that time. Where the nigga public like shine For a witness to drop a dime For self-defense, do a dime Celebs doing time uh -huh. Mike Vick on the chow line yeah. 
even Kobe. Jason Williams, Gage, kick like Shinobi. Know the kill for perjury. Uh -huh. You know you done fucked up, right? You know you done fucked up, right? Let's go. When it's late night, make sure it's packed tight. And when you take those flights, never eye the Jake in sight. And shake them fuckers when they dead and right. Uh, make it a fifth go rumble. Because of stick up trouble. Blasting your gap for a cat for a fact for some crap that don't involve you. For some dudes that don't love you. All they wanna do is fun you. Until you go down. And don't do shit for you when you lock down. Or even when you touch down. Huh? But it tell you to go to the pound. Yeah. The same block that gave you a pound. Years in the pen, now you live it again. What mind state are you in when you back in for 10 and you was just waiting 14 to come home to relive it again? Entrapment should be a sin. The way they reel us in, parole us to a revolving door to bring us in. Game is insane. The streets will F with your brain. That's why I'm out the game. Choke, don't joke. You already know. We here. Truth be told all day, every day, even on your birthday, even on the holiday and your anniversary. Bionic Pie, good looking. Road Runners, what up? All right. Y'all in the building tonight. What game is that on the screen? What game is that? Silky Santiago. <sighs> Let me stretch for a minute. For the haters, I'm going to give a good stretch for you haters. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> All right, too big for skinny jeans. I see you. Toronto, what up? Canada. That's for several runners. Appreciate you. Oh, battery's dead over here. Yeah, I, ain't, I don't care to see Diddy. I imagine, peace God, you see me just uh, video these dudes. <laughs> oh, brothers, brothers, brothers. Brothers, brothers, brothers. Look, brothers, I love you, man. You know, it's just business, brother. Nothing's changed, man. You can't negotiate with me when I tell you my price, man. My price is my price. I love you, and I'll always be your friend. But business is business, brother. It's non-negotiable. Stop asking. Instagram, I'm live on YouTube, Patreon. One second, y'all.
Hi. Who else? Original man up in here. Welcome, welcome. Where's the BI interview? The BI interview is on BI's page. Okay, so <clears throat> let me give a shout out to all my people in Nashville. But um, I think I kind of figured out this whole uh, how this whole gay thing is just so prominent in in hip hop now and. We're looking at this uh, um, this uh, some on YouTube right now where somebody's talking about the the, uh, Zulu Nation, the first gay family of hip hop. When I saw that, It confirmed a lot of my suspicions and thoughts of my time in this entertainment industry. Let me give a shout out to all my people out of Nashville, Tennessee, Cashville. You know what it is. Yeah, I know um, my Learn From Mistakes tour is going on. And uh, of course, you know, I went through Nashville, Tennessee. and I got a couple of my stories. Well, I got a lot of my stories from my mouth. And um, but I, I'm really feeling Nashville a lot. Like I told y'all, I'm about to move there in a minute. Wanted somebody to get over here. Here's another brother. Two. That I would like to introduce to y'all. In case y'all didn't know. What up, Instagram? I'm live on YouTube. Come through. Come on, ladders. Pull up. Pull up. I'm Chef Mike True, Violence Interrupting, Community Director for Gideon's Army. Uh, uh, we in Nashville, Tennessee, and North Nashville, brother. All right. How long you been in Nashville? All my life, born and raised. How old are you? 39. All right. Mm-hmm. What was your, uh, growing up, would you say you came from a poor, middle class, or rich family? <laughs> I came from the gutter. I came from the hood, so I, w- I we would say poor. Did you grow up in a single or co-parent home? Single, raised by my father. Now that's different, because most people say single parent home, but raised by their mother. Absolutely. How, how, how do you think being raised by a single parent dad is different from being raised by a single parent mom? Well, as being a man, you, instill more like what my father, if he was alive, he'd be almost 80 some years old. So I was raised the old way, you know what I'm saying? So if you were a male being raised by a woman, 
you would probably have more feminine attributes or that's why a lot of these men nowadays fight women and argue with women. But I come from an age where men don't argue with women. Like women, men don't put out, like we ain't got to put our hands on. Like, so I was just more masculine. I had a lot more masculine guidance and uh, was really taught how to be a man, me being a man. So I figured if you was a woman raised by a single mother, you probably have some type of father loss issues, but at least you would know how to be a woman because you raised by one, you know what I mean? But to me, I feel like a lot of uh, men that was raised by the women in the hood just uh, tend to have more feminine attributes, so to say, you know what I'm saying? Not all of them though, but most of them. But my father just taught us to, we, like I ain't even had to, we could, he, we, he wouldn't even let us watch this. It was stuff he told us men didn't do. Now that I got older, I realized I had to reteach myself, but he just taught me just how to be a man and how to work hard and how to get it out the mud. All right. uh, so, where, where do most people know you for? Um, right now, everybody know me from healing the community and uh, being a community organizer with Gideon's Army and an international gourmet chef. So I'm known as a chef, so even in every title, they still call me chef. So even here in the streets, I'm known uh, as Chef True. Okay. And uh, before you was Chef True, who were you? I was Mike True, East Side Outlaw out here running the streets like everybody else trying to make a name for nothing. You know what I mean? I also was in the music industry for quite a while, so in the streets, everybody know me from, you know what I mean? Running around the blocks and uh, being in the music industry and doing a lot of major things with that as far as in the city anyway. At what age did you make your transition? Uh, 26, 27 was when I decided I was going to really, for really, for truly change. But uh, it was in 2008 was when I uh, first started. What's up, fam? When I first started uh, really, you know what I mean, like pulling myself out of the streets, like I can't keep doing this. And uh, I've been doing my thing in the uh, culinary industry ever since. What made you get out the street? Man, my last case, I caught a case and it, it, I spent my last $50,000 to be free. So it was either continue to do what I do this, that took all the money I made in the streets or figure out a new route. And I had a bunch of children and I just was, I wasn't finna go that route. So what made me get out the streets was uh, uh, me wanting a better life for my children and knowing I can't keep doing the same thing and getting better results. And with that better life, what are you doing now? giving back to the community. Uh, if y'all can, uh, can Google Gideon's Army Nashville, so we're a grassroots organization that's built around restorative justice, restorative practice. So basically I use my uh, influence as a uh, ex-gang member, ex-street dude, as, uh, and use that to uplift the, uh, the youth here in Nashville, empower them on economic growth. That's why we're standing right here in front of a store we purchased during um, the tornado, we were hit with a tornado back in 2020, right before COVID that decimated North Nashville, which is this area we standing in, which is 3728, which has the highest incarceration rate in the nation. So we are the ones who, uh, Gideon's Army did the Driving While Black report, which led to them finding out we have the highest incarceration rate in the nation. So we are research, we are uh, economic development, we are restorative justice, restorative practice organization that builds, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We build programs that allow the youth to have an outlet. You know what I mean? So if you just got out of jail, LT, you met him earlier, he has the reentry program. What's up, brother? We got the violence interruption program where we uh, make sure these young brothers ain't killing themselves. And whenever beef or interaction happens, we intervene because, you know, the police can't solve the problem. They ain't, they ain't stopped crime yet, but community can. So basically what I do is use my influence to change the narrative in the community and empower us. So I don't, wanna, I don't want you to stop being a soldier, I just want you to start aiming your bullets in the right direction. I copy that. Now talk about the, uh, the medical world and your holistic thing going on. <laughs> Tell us about that, man. Cause man. I hear that, you know, there's a few people during COVID, you saved them. Yeah, so uh, y'all can check me out, true to earthorganics.com. That's true with the number two. Uh, earthorganics.com but uh, I've been a holistic healer for man like 16 years um, I've studied medicine herbology and I use the earth to heal the planet 
I mean, I use the earth to heal people with the uh, herbs from the planet. So basically, that's why I call it True to Earth. I've cured over 200 people of COVID, like not treated them, but cured them. I don't do a lot of talking about it because there's a lot of censorship around there. Like I actually had a whole website shut down that was generating a lot of money a month over me, not even me making any claims, because I make no medical claims on any of my websites, but people that I've cured came back and did reviews and they shut my website down based off of the reviews they were giving, saying that I cured them of their ailments of so to say. So not only COVID, but we treat high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, hypertension, lupus, uh, several different types of cancers. So if you're dealing with any type of ailment of the body, then True to Earth can create a formula that'll uh, allow you to heal without going to the doctor and getting all those medicines. Not saying that I don't recommend, what's up with your brother? You all right? That's what's up, man. Uh, not that I don't recommend Western medicine in some senses, but there's always a different way or a different route. And Western medicine ain't always the answer. Would you say that, and this is me saying it ain't you, uh, you can agree or disagree, do you feel like they shut your website down so that they could continue to push their medicines opposed to uh, uh, natural healings? Yeah, well, you know, it was, they shut it down like right around when all they, everybody was pumping that vaccine thing really tough. And one of my, the items that I sell, it literally, what's up, brother? It cured, uh, it cured COVID. So it's like, yeah, you know I mean, we don't need no vaccine. First of all, if you ever got COVID, then you already have the antibody. So it's, it's useless to get the vaccine because the vaccine is to give you the antibody. So if you already got the antibody, then you don't need it. And if you haven't got COVID, why introduce a foreign, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Why, yeah, a foreign cell into your body. It just don't make no sense. So like my, I don't do a lot. At first I did do a lot of talking, breaking down the science of it and what's actually killing people and how I'm able to heal them. Cause people are dying through immune responses. So your immune system is attacking your body right. and it's causing pulmonary embolism, hypoxia and things of that nature. What's up with you brother? But uh, <clears throat> it's basically where your own immune system is. That's why they say people with uh, immune uh, deficiencies or immune compromised and things like that are more at risk because it's your actual immune system attacking you. All of those responses, the loss of taste, the uh, body fatigue, inflammation, all of that stuff is an immune response. Right. So I just know how to turn off T cells and, and activate T cells and B cells and make them do what they supposed to do so that they don't cause cytokine storms. Because most people that were dying were dying from cytokine storms uh, attacking their lungs. And that's where too many cytokines, which is part of the immune system and lymphocytes, were actually attacking the, the good cells. So I think between my knowledge and how much money I made when I first launched it, they was like, oh, now, nah. and the message that was spread, they was like, nah. So they basically said that I was selling, uh, I was selling medical supplies or also selling hemp, but I don't sell hemp. But one of my uh, in items has hemp oil in it, but hemp oil isn't considered CBD or cannabis. So, but they was basically saying it fall under the same group. So they flagged me and shut the website down. Or they didn't shut the website down, they shut my credit card processing down. So basically they made it where I couldn't take online payments. You know what I'm saying? But it's always ways around that. I just revised it, redid a new website, was back up. So I'm operating on a temporary site right now till we get all the formatting back done. But they can't stop it, you know what I mean? But tell, tell the people that website. True to earthorganics.com. That's T-R-U-E, uh, the number two, E-A-R-T-H-O-R. -R Oh, let me put that on the screen. I need to uh, add that on the screen because I know a lot of people want this information. In it, but hemp oil isn't considered CBD or cannabis. So, but they was basically saying it fall under the same group. So they flagged me and shut the website down. Or they didn't shut the website down. They shut my credit card processing down. So basically, they made it where I couldn't take online payments. You know what I'm saying? But it's always ways around that. I just revised it, redid a new website, was back up. So I'm operating on a temporary site right now till we get all the formatting back done. But they can't stop it, you know what I mean? But tell, tell the people that website. True to earthorganics.com. That's T R U E, uh, the number two, E A R T H O R G A N I C S dot com. True to earthorganics.com. Or you can find me on all the social sites. It's M I C T R U, Mike True, or Chef Mike True on all the social sites.
All right, and then, then when your, your store you got opening up right here. Yeah. Tell us about it. And where True to earthorganics.com. That's T R U E, uh, the number two E A R T H O R G A N I C S dot com. True to earthorganics.com, or you can find me on all the social sites. It's M I C T R U Mike True or Chef Mike True on all the social sites. All right, and then, then when your, your store you got opening up right here. Yeah. Tell us about it and when will it be opening? So this is an extension of Gideon's Army, as you see the logo on the wall right here. And this is, I found the Rashida Fatuga. And uh, this is a mural, like Rashida Fatuga is very much alive and well, but it's all, all too often uh, we don't put murals on the walls until people pass. You know what I mean? It's like we wait till they dead to give them their flowers. So one thing I wanted to do with this store is uh, empower people while they still alive and give people their flowers while they still alive. So that's why we did this mural for Rashida Fatuga. And if you know about the 42 principles of my yacht, we base our healing practices off the 42 principles of my yacht. And uh, what that does is incorporate truth and balance into healing rather than law and order. Because like I said, police don't heal nothing. Police, right in this day and time, they do more damage than they do support. So Gideon's Army supports the community. We create programs to uh, empower the community. And this store is one of those things that uh, transpire from the work that we do. Like I was saying at first, we had a big tornado came through here and this store was owned by a foreigner. And the guy that lives next door where you parked your car at, the guy that lives right there was, uh, they had had showers here and uh, food trucks that we had sent up here to feed all the people because all the lights had been out for weeks. So this store was had been closed. They, the insurance told him that he needed to open. They not gonna c cover his uh, loss no more since the lights came back on. But we had people over here One second, y'all. Shout out to Chef Mike True. You know how we do. Make a long story short, he got to fighting with some of the people, got to arguing with him. He ended up spitting on the man next door. The uh, Black Panther Party came up here and they were doing a protest and uh was trying to protest the um the way hold on let me call you right back since i'm doing this interview if you at the house just put it in the mailbox and then i'll uh i'll uh cash app you for it okay, thank you. all right thank you okay. but, but. my bad man i had somebody making a delivery but um so he spit on the man uh and we got the phone call so me i'm a media that's what i do with violence interruption i mediate street beef and things of that nature so i got a call to mediate between the man here and there make a long story short during the mediation i found out they had previous rivalry and he said something like i'll sell you the store if you want it you know what i'm saying like trying to be smart and say that and uh i was like all right i'm gonna hold you to that not knowing i had already contacted the realtor because i fight dirty like i ain't trying to protest and stand in front of your building and be like no man no no you can't sell nothing fuck all that so we we if we gonna you gonna kill something cut their head off because you cut a man legs off he'll still roll to the bag you see what i'm saying so just us uh, shutting them down ain't gonna guarantee it's gonna cut his money off so i automatically contact the person see what they was wanting for it it was for sale so uh i had told rashida and we, i didn't think nothing else about it next thing you know she called me was like we're gonna go on and buy the store so make a long story short we bought the store uh, in 2020, we about to open up here next month, and I'm opening up a vegan restaurant, uh, Apothecary, which sells the herbal products that I uh, make, and it's gonna also be a discount tobacco store. So it's gonna have all the stuff this community need, cause this is like kind of a community desert. There ain't no grocery store except for that one right there, all the way up there, which is Kroger's. So everybody that live right here, they don't get really got, if you wanna get a pack of cigarettes, you gotta walk all the way up there on Buck Cannon where y'all, she said y'all was at earlier. So by opening this, it helped the community have access to goods and resources. That's a, that's a small move, man. That's yeah. Move. I wish y'all all the luck with that, man. Absolutely. Anything you want to add before we wrap it up? Man, just make sure y'all check out Gideon's Army. Uh, subscribe. Uh, you can sign up to donate monthly. Even if it's just $5 or a dollar, it go a long way because we feed a lot of people in the community. Uh, I see y'all see on this same video, my brother's walking around in the projects. We do a lot to make sure that... Uh, we are continuing to grow and not need this system as much. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times, 
this system put things in place that feel like they're giving us an advantage, but it's really just to keep us stifled even more. So the more you give to Gideon's Army, the more we can continue to give to our community. Peace, love, and light, man. Make sure y'all check out their website, TrueToEarthOrganics.com. Let's say if somebody famous saw this and they was feeling you, let's say like uh, LeBron or Drake, and they say, yo, I want, I want to contribute to them, to them brothers. Mm -hmm. What would y'all need? Well, uh, all they needed to sit down and let us know uh, what they want to contribute and how they want to contribute, because we got uh, a team in place to be able to handle whatever. We would need help with uh, creating more um, donors, because that's the main thing, like I said, money. We just, uh, one of the first organizations they got the city to actually actually include us in the budget. So they didn't include us in the main budget, but they set a budget aside for what we do in another department to empower us a little bit. So we've been doing all this work uh, off of our own muscle, so to say. So if somebody could put some financial muscle behind it, and believe it or not, we, 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 we financially strong out here, but one thing I've learned that even a few millions or millions of dollars only go so far when you're talking about economically empowering the entire uh, city. You see what I'm saying? So right now we focus on North Nashville. The more money we got, we can put that in East Nashville, South Nashville, West Nashville. We already got the pieces put together. We just need the money to bring the more workers in because we have only a handful. You met the violence interrupters we have. That's the only handful of violence interrupters we have working the entire city. You see what I'm saying? But we focus on North Nashville since it's the highest incarceration rate. So what I would say is them sitting down, seeing what we're about and seeing how they could actually uh, help funnel in resources and we don't even need just handouts because them just as simple as making a post and telling their followers to donate five dollars. Uh, if you got a million followers and each one of your followers donate five dollars, that's five million dollars and you didn't spend a dime. All you did was open your mouth. So yeah, you know I mean, tell them to research Gideon's Army Nashville. We was on the BET documentary uh, that they did with, uh, what's the, um, uh, say O'Brien, I can't remember her first name. But uh, she did a documentary going around showing different struggles of America and how the government systematically put us in the situations that we are in. And we were part of the prison, the pipeline segment, because we one of the strongest organizations in America that's dismantling the school to prison pipeline. That's big, man. Appreciate you. And yeah. man, I'm sure everybody out here looking at this, you, are, you probably just inspired some brothers in other cities to do the same thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Much love, man. Much man. respect. Peace, love, and light, man. All right, one. Absolutely. Choke, no joke. Shout out to my man, Chef Mike True. Very positive brother. I tell you, these brothers in Nashville, they built a little different, man. Instead of protesting your store, they're going to buy it. <laughs> That's gangsta on a whole nother level without a weapon. That is super gangsta with uh, like, come on, man. These foreigners, you're going to spit on a person in our neighborhood and we come and we support y'all every day. We will buy your business in Nashville and move you the F up out of here. Yeah. All right. Shout out to the chef, Mike True. If, um, uh, I hope y'all got to follow him on Instagram. Tell him Choke No Joke sent you. You know what I'm saying? Here's his Instagram right here. It's Mike True, M-I-C-T-R-U-E. You see he's a chef, he nice with it. You know what I mean? So Chef Mike True, shout out to you, brother. Shout out to Gideon's Army. You see he out here in the streets. And he out here in, in his kitchen with the, and making these sweets. <laughs> Shout out to my bro right there, man. Joke, no joke. You already know, man. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing, baby. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Choke, no joke. You know what it is. Mistakes out right now on all platforms. This one right here is for the mixtape. Let's go. Yo, nah, I ain't do this for clout. Uh, I'm just a real nigga trying to figure you out. How you don't put blood in this Judas mouth? Talking Japanese mind like you're fanning out. 
watching that the bitch that disrespect your kid and her earth. Carmen, I know that it hurt. You said pop left us. When rappers that wait, get all the rappers in the studio, which made me think, well, what you got on you? And homie and B, is that West for home? He didn't stream one link. You ain't fighting for punishment. I'm sick and I'm done with it. If it was part of your plan, I'd party my warrior on it. I'm just your fan. We're little celebrity. Some say it's just the hate in me. Nah, I'm cut from a cloth. You don't brush shit off. Well, the penthouse of law. Gotta hide but steal it. Only forgive all. The sexual healing. And that door right now is not a pill. With these chicks, with the dicks like little Nas. X, I'm not a fan. You damage your brand. Your Nas don't ever do that shit again. I'm signing off. S go stand. Chunk on Chunk, you know what it is. <laughs> you know what it is. And yeah. you niggas, I ain't sorry for shit. I ain't with your boys' games, they don't with the shit. I'm nothing like Nah, I'm with the shit. I'm more like Joe when the fuck your shit. The boat got me on chill. He said I'm Elmatic with the static, with the ratchet. Let's go to the Brooklyn. Cause he got a habit, school days, would've called you fat, you smoke you, like a spike lead joint, yo the greatest of all time, I hit with all time, buster, nigga your mic with the shot, knock out, woo, yeah my mind is, give you a reason, to be a one-eyed, without a reasonable doubt, you been a liar, you had a game, jazz old inspired, great Dame and Chris, they ran the lion through the rock and the fire. Damn, you cold. Build the nation, but brought back home. How you keep in LA when Cube is home? How you be in LA when Zip is gone? Mr. Mr. Smith, yeah, I'm nice with the gift. So, the double tongue just got those two. Your wisdom, knowledge, that I'm king too. I'm sorry I met the other side of you. That's a gift and a curse. I'm Christ from birth. From the hearse to the dirt. Big niggas claim hurt. So I stay on my bullshit like I'm dirt. And never shy. Let my feelings fly. Cause we all die. Like y'all been. Nigga, I'm here. Only shit I have is the truth not be told. We all get old. This show's no joke. Y'all already know. Let's go. Show no joke. You already know. Learn from the stage out right now on platforms. You already know. You already know. Now. Once again, shout out to my man, Chef Mike True. Choke no joke, truth be told, all day, every day. If you thought the show was over, it just started. Because I ain't even get into what I'm about to get into. Okay? So, uh, if you thought it was over, sorry! What up, what up, Instagram? Yeah, I'm back. I ain't going nowhere, you know? Shrimp. <laughs> it's low key making some shrimp. So this is why I've been playing the music and things like that before I really got into it. I'm hungry. I'm sorry. I'm be honest with y'all. God, I was over there making shrimp, man. I was making some shrimp. Okay. And um, one day, me and Big Gene gonna have this cook off, but y'all gonna y'all got to know. That I'm nice in the kitchen, Chef Mike True. I might have to hit you up and get a you know a couple of your recipes and share a couple of recipes, cause um I'm nice too. Let me let me let me just, let me just give y'all a little preview of what I do. I don't want nobody mouth watering. I don't need y'all mouth watering. But you see how my shrimp come out? Look at that. Golden brown. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. 
When you come to Las Vegas, I'm gonna cook you dinner. Okay, you I heard that before. Y'all always like y'all all say that. Then I come on tour and I hit the grounds, and then I can't find none of y'all. Y'all all wanna cook. Whatever. Y'all wanna take me out. Whatever. That's cap, Miss Uh Rinalda. Who hot? What the hell? Burn my goddamn mouth. Trying to stunt. <sighs> Won't do that again. Fresh out the grease. Woo! But it was tasty. <laughs> she, she was hot, hot. Whole hot. Hot for real hot. Keep fast with up. BX all day. Oh, Lolly, I get busy in the kitchen, baby girl. I'll come through. Chef it up for you. Let me know. Let me know. I'll come through. And then y'all ladies need me in your kitchen because you can't cook. Be honest with yourself. You just got to be honest with yourself. You know, Ball and Franks ain't cooking, ladies. <laughs> Ball and Franks make it... Uh, what are they call Thomas English muffins or some? Throwing a little butter on an English muffin, putting it in toast, ain't cooking, baby. Let me come batter up that shrimp for you. Season it up real nice. Fry your army. Hook you up. You could lie to your husband, tell him you cooked. <laughs> Yeah, so somebody said cooking Captain Crunch. So what I want to get to as far as this industry thing. For years we've been hearing about this whole Gay Mafia, the Gay Boule, the Illuminati, whatever you want to call it. To me, Illuminati is a blanket name for all secret societies. Well, it's the Skull and Bones, I don't care if you're AKA, you're Delta, you're Sigma, you're uh, a Kappa, you're a Q, you're all down with secret societies. You all are down with a group that you cannot reveal your secrets. Am I wrong or am I wrong? Don't tell me what this better not be, Rashawn, because you can leave right now. <laughs> People come in and watch you and tell you what you better not be talking about. Look at this, this person here. This better not be a Zulu video. Well, you better not be watching it. Goodbye. And I'm not going to even block you. You can block yourself. See ya. Um, now, I see this thing uh, once I said. Uh, I didn't watch it. It's like a whole bunch of parts of this thing. Like It's like way too super long to sit down and try to watch the whole thing. But basically what they're saying is uh, Zulu Nation could be or is be or allegedly is the first gay hip hop family. Now, for years and years and years up until to now with uh, 
this little uh chick with the uh with the pp um who you know doing videos with dudes in jail and kissing on the war stages everything um little chick with the pp x um that's what we're gonna call him he he's really a transsexual because he wears wigs and they say according to like mr c that if you wear a wig then that would make you a transsexual so the fact that he wears a lace front wig will make him a transsexual all right so but up until this day where it was a point where dudes like nelly had tip drill video he gets banned for just swiping a credit card through a girl crack uh, her butt but now we can have uh cardi b and megan and these other artists humping on each other and all way worse right we even got a dude that could do a jail a video in jail with a bunch of dudes i didn't see the video but this is what I'm hearing. And I'd have no desire to see it. But that's something that the networks wouldn't allow to air. You know, award shows, they wouldn't, have, they wouldn't have done that. But now, clearly, they are forcing this agenda on us. The reason they're forcing this agenda on us, because everybody that's already in the industry that has made it has already been down with this. And they're just trying to make it to where we all can see it and accept it and they put laws in place to where you can't use certain words you know like faggot and uh other words that will be considered a, a hate crime or insensitive but you can say nigga 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 all day you say faggot oh, y'all right now y'all probably crazy oh chokes and faggot like you know, so, which is just a slang, just like nigga is a slang. You know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> some of us from uh, the old school, we not going to change because people tell us change. Like, you're not just going to tell me uh, a man is a man because he throw on the wig. I mean, is a woman because he throw on the wig. You're not going to tell me that. <clears throat> It's okay <coughs> that a man that identifies <coughs> as a woman can play sports with biological women. I'm not agreeing to none of that. But if you want to be who you want to be and you feel who you want to feel, you identify as which you, you can do that. But once you start forcing it on society and then people that don't agree with your ideology 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 of life or however you want to operate that's on you now where it goes into hip-hop is this told y'all earlier to watch crush groove right and if you rock with me you did if you never saw it if you've seen it a hundred times you didn't need to see it and you'll know what i'm talking about sorry king Right, so for years of me being in the industry, I always wondered why I got so many indecent proposals from men, right? At this age, I don't figured it out. Now, where did this start? Where did this start? Now, when you go back and you look at, when you go and look at this stuff that's coming out right now, like this uh, Zulu Nation, the first gay family. If you follow me for years, you heard me tell interviews, you heard me talk about these things. 
this is nothing new. Um, as far as me feeling like it's a conservative effort to push an agenda because most of these people that's in this lifestyle are living a lie or not being the, not being who they are in private, who they present to us in public, right? So when you go to how does it start? How did it get to the point today where we got little PP X, um, little chick PP X? able to blatantly do the type of stuff on stage that C. C. Dolores Tucker, um, Bob Dole, criticizes just for the lyrics, just for lyrics of gangster music. They got labels to drop this and other. So you telling me these people could push a whole agenda of same sex on these kids blatantly, but you wanted to ban our music for reporting street news. Where is the C. Dolores Tuckers of the world today? Why ain't none of the parents outraged with none of this? Why? Because they put laws in place that if you are against it, it is called a hate crime or gay bashing or you homophobic, which is really heterophobia. The gays have something against the straight people. They have heterophobia. We are wrong when we want to be proud to be straight. But if we say something about them, we're homophobic. But in reverse, it's heterophobia for us. But they just don't use that word. Right? And with these laws they didn't put in place, they should have put in that Say well, not necessarily same sex, but people that are identified in other than what they what they biologically are should be some type of mental illness. Because we know there's two genders. Right? So if you think you other than what you are, it should be some type of mental illness. Not saying that if you're a lesbian, you you're you're crazy. But if you are a lesbian, you saying you are a man, knowing that you're a woman that, that just like women, and you say, no, I'm a man, then there's some type of mental illness there. Same flip side on the man side. If you identify as a woman, fine. But if you think that you are a woman and you know you got this thing swinging between your legs, that is some type of form of in mental illness. And I think that those should go hand in hand with these laws that they trying to change to make us understand that a man could walk in a woman's bathroom if he has on a wig or identifies as a woman. Like I showed y'all that video of the woman that went, that was disgusted because she had a, a little daughter with her at a spa and this, and the spa let this transsexual go to the woman's side. So this guy or this transsexuals walking around the spa and you know how these spas are, you naked, you know, because uh, you you have to be a nude in the showers or whatever, things like that, right? So this little girl is traumatized because it's nothing but titties and coochie walking around and then she's looking at this woman that got a penis swinging. So the mother comes out to the front like, yo, how you got this 
transsexual in here with my little girl. And they like, yo, what do what, what you want us to do? He identifies as a woman, so he could go over there. How fair is that? And what does that do to the little girl mental? Do she start wondering why she don't have a penis? But this ain't why I'm getting into all that. I'm just showing you that. That's how far this hidden agenda that came to the forefront. And it is now like, bam, after Obama put his, everything in place, and now with Biden continuing where Obama finished, they the same team. Now, men can play sports with women, go in the bathroom with women. And say, this was all your black president that y'all love so much. He ushered in this whole agenda and his people is putting the icing on the cake. But y'all love Obama and don't see how this affects you. And this is no disrespect to to. The, the gay community, because, yeah, we want y'all to have rights. Of course, y'all should have rights. Y'all have more rights than black people right now. You and the Asians got more rights than black people right now. You know, so kudos and congratulations to y'all. We happy for y'all. But it still has to be some type of form of mental illness because the little girl's traumatized now. Is that her fault? That she's traumatized and don't and, and confused. Should that be put on a kid at that age for them to be trying to figure out why this lady has a penis swinging and every other woman in here don't? Is that for a kid to be trying to figure out? Is that for a mother at that age to have to go home and try to explain this to this kid? That's that no. That should, that should not be forced on the mother to have to explain these type of things. There's a time and an age for that. But now society is making it to where you got to talk to your kids about this because they'll be sitting down, two little boys will be sitting down watching a cartoon and two boys kiss and then they'll turn around and start kissing just because they watching it. So this agenda has been going on for a long time and they just slowly groomed us into bam, right? So going back to the origins of hip hop, a lot of this, I'm going to say, I'm going to have to say alleged because I was in, in the bedroom. All right. Now, if Bam has been allegedly gay from the conception of Zulu Nation and whatever they was before Zulu Nation, and he was sleeping with all these men and boys, allegedly, for all these years, then he pop off and becomes a mega star. What happens? especially with him being a figurehead of a gang. You get a bunch of groupies and you get people that want to uh, be a part of what he got going on. Now, if his sexuality is gay, and most of the people that he that surround him are going to be subjected to it. And if you look at what this thing is about, more or less, that's what they're saying. Everybody been knew that Africa Ben Bottom was gay. Right? Now, he's the Bronx. Cool Herc was also in the Bronx. But there's never been no rumors of Cool Herc being gay. That I heard of. He don't have the stigma on him that Bam Bada has, right? 
hole in Bronx for a minute. Right now, Africa Bamba is the king of the Bronx in hip hop with the Soul Sonic Force, a Planet Rock, everything. This, let me see what year this was. Nineteen eighty two. So nineteen eighty two, that's three years after Rapper's Delight. And Rapper's Delight takes off. Here come Planet Rock afterwards. And then hip hop is through the roof, right? Now in eighty two, you got Planet Rock. I told you Def Jam started 84. So 84, 82, 84, and Uptown Records 86. 82, 84, 86. 82, Planet Rock, Africa, Bambada. 84, Russell Simmons, Rick Rubin, Def Jam. And then Uptown Records, two years later. Now, what these people all have in common is the alleged rumors of them being Gay. Russell Simmons, Africa Bambada, Andre Harrell. When Planet Rock is popping off, these guys are all hanging together at the Roxy. Right? Now, if you watch the movie Crush Groove, and I'm bringing Tyrone Williams, Cold Chillin', a few years, I mean, into this story later, because that's the Juice Crew or whatever, right? So now, if you got African Bambada, he's now a pop star. And then you got Russell Simmons, who's, who's over here starting Def Jam, and all these dudes is hanging out at the Roxy back there. Now, y'all remember uh, Crush Groove, Russell R Simmons and Rick Rubin started Def Jam. And they NYU dorm, and they was roommates. Now, it's alleged that those two, when they were roommates, was lovers. So in the movie Crush Groove, when you're watching Russell and Rick Rubin, allegedly rumors to say that they was lovers. Then... Russell started hanging out with Andre Harrell, who was forming Uptown Records at the time, who would be considered the competition at the time. Rumors also say that Andre Harrell may be gay or bisexual. So you got Africa being bothered with these, these rumors. You got Russell Simmons with these rumors. You got Andre Harrell with these rumors. Right? Allegedly. I'm not saying nothing's true because I've never been in the room with, in the bedroom with him. You know. If there's somebody out here that has, then you can confirm if that some of this may true. That if you're a man and you've been with Bambada, then you can confirm that that may be true. If you are a man and you've been with Russell, then you can confirm that it's true. Not asking anybody to come forth because I don't care. Um, and if you've been with Andre Yarrell and you're a man, then you know that this may be true, right? So... 
And it's all alleged because I've never seen any of these men in the bed with men, right? I'm just saying, going from the rumors and the histories of the industry, let's just keep going. Then you got Fly Ty Williams, Cold Chiller. And you never had these rumors about Fly Ty, at least I never heard anything about him in Cold Chiller. All right. And I know there was other hip hop labels before this, you know, like Pop Art in Philly and stuff like that, uh, that rocked with Biz and all, you know, all these other artists or whatever. Um, but I'm talking about New York, right? So now we got Queens and Brooklyn covered. We got with Cold Chilling. We got Uptown covered with uh, Mount Vernon with Andre Harrell. We got Queens with Def Jam. Also, them, they are uh, based in Manhattan because they're at NYU. And Africa Ben out in the Bronx. So if you ain't never heard any of these rumors by any of these guys, then there may not be any truth to this, right? So as we move on in this story, you got Russell, we'll go back to Crush Groove. Allegedly, Russell and Rick was lovers. And they fell out because Russell started hanging out with Andre. I'm not saying he was sleeping with Andre. I'm just, it is alleged that they, Rick Rubin and Russell stopped dealing with each other over Andre or whatever, or because Andre was, Russell was hanging with Andre. In the movie Crush Groove, you remember they became in financial trouble and they couldn't run the label, right? Now remember, you got LL who comes in, does the scene box and he performed for them and boom, that's how he got signed to Def Jam. I don't know if T La Rock was the first artist on Def Jam. Um, I think he was, but let's just say LL, right? In the movie, Crush Groove, Russell was running around borrowing money from some people and he borrowed some money from some dude who was JB, who we don't know who is in real life. And remember the full force dudes kept beating up Russell until they got their money. I need my money, Russell. This is going to happen every day to JP gets his money. You know, I know that movie backwards, right? Crush Groove is based on the true story. It's loosely based on Russell Simmons' life, right? So what happens, if you remember the movie, Russell runs out of, and, and um, Russell and Rick run out of money and they running around. They get funded and then you see at the end of Crush Groove, they got money now. They done sign LL. They done sign a couple of acts. They pop. Well, the money that they got came from Leo Cohen's father. Russell ran out of money. Was dealing with Leo because Leo started managing uh, Run DMC when uh, Russell was on his drug binge, or allegedly, and uh, after Leo did the the Houdini, uh, the Run DMC concert, who was pop at the time with Harold Smith, who was doing rock shows. Leo was doing rock shows. He wasn't messing with hip hop. He saw hip hop was popping. Book Run DMC, and it popped. 
because Run DMC was pop. He tried to continue where Houdini caught a brick. They he was hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So Run and them was on on tour overseas. Russell can't be found. Leo gets to, they get Leo to go. Leo gets to build a relationship with them. Boom, 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 boom. Russell runs out of money. Leo father is the president of an Israeli bank. He got money. He tell Russell, yo, I right, we'll give you the money if you make us 50-50 partners. Russell ain't got no goddamn choice. He take the money from Leon's father. This gives Leon a percentage, 50% partner in Def Jam. This is how the Jewish people took over Def Jam. Here we had a Jewish partner with Rick Rubin. But this is where they funding came from. And then this is how Leo becomes so intricate and in hip hop. Now there's rumors about him too. I can't confirm any of these rumors, but I've heard him too. And I've heard more about him more recently, which makes a lot more sense to me because I just thought that he was just a powerful white guy. I didn't know that he may be down with the shits too. And allegedly he is. So it's their old cult crew. And then I don't know why I didn't think that if he's hanging with Russell, just cause he's white, that he might not be down with, with Andre and, and what everybody else is doing. Cause he's white, stupid me. You know what I'm saying? Just thinking that he's the money guy, which go, right? Allegedly. So, I'm sure there are people that tell you that they know these, these things about these people, right? So, boom. This is where I think the whole gay, boule, mafia, whatever, Illuminati, whatever you want to call it, is formed. Hip hop pops, Africa Bambada is at the at the top. Def Jam pops two years later. LL Cool J, this that, and the other, they take off. Two years later, Andre Harrell pops off for Uptown Records. Heavy D, Mary J. Blige, Finesse Sequence, Jody C, this that, and the other. Cold Chillin pops off. Juice Crew, Big Daddy K, Molly Marv, Cool G Rap. Who else? Kane, Kooji Rap, Biz, Shantae, Shan, so on and so forth, right? Now, remember the artist and remember the whole cult, right? So now we got, we got Russell, Africa Bambada, Andre Harrell, Fly Top, Cold Chillin'. Right. Hip hop blows up. Now you start getting into the millions. Now they probably got so much money that now with them over there doing coke and all this other stuff, allegedly, the secret gay parties, this, that, and the other. They already doing the gay stuff already, allegedly. But now you bring in the street niggas into the fold. The street niggas ain't with the eccentric stuff that Bam Bada and them niggas got going on over there. They coming in, we bring it in, because it went from the funk uh, of Melly Mel and um, and the Funky Four, Funk, Furious Five, of uh, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, dressing all punk rock like Bambada and them was with the funk, and now we going Jane Brown Street break beats this that other. So all that shit with niggas wearing boots and and, and dressing all weird and everything. These niggas was doing that. The Bambada was doing it because they was already eccentric, messing with the the. The gay world. 
This is why they can have no problems wearing boots and, and all that other stuff. They was already doing that, allegedly, right? So when the streets come in, we not with all that extra eccentric stuff. But they are. So they are classically probably doing this stuff, right? Where the dudes, the normal dudes, the regular street dudes ain't with it, right? So now it gets to the point where everyone's getting successful. Everyone's going platinum, gold, hip hop's taking off. Now we get into these elite clubs and, and these big stars want to meet these rappers that's becoming stars. And they doing, you know, they got to be around the wear shit. And that's when the proposals start coming in, I believe. Yo, you want to go to the next level? You got to do this. You ain't really got to do it. But they telling you, you can get this, you can get that, you can get this, you can get that, right? But then when they start showing it to us, niggas start lining up, right? I'm willing to bet a lot of artists, and I don't want to say no artists because there's a lot of artists that was on these labels that... There's artists that came up in Def Jam that have been rumored to be secretly gay. When you go to Uptown, there's always been the rumor of Andre Harrell and Puff. And then there's Puff leaving and needing to get to the next level. And then there's always the rumors of him having to sleep with Cloud Davis. Right? And this is all alleged. But if you think that if someone had to sleep with Bambada to get to the next level or to sleep with Russell to get to the next level or to get in a club or whatever, or cold or whatever the hell they may be, look at the success of the people that were gay or play with the gay or secretly gay and then look at the 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 the, the other people who had mediocre success. Now look at Tyrone Williams, Fly Ty, Cold Chili. It didn't make it as big as Uptown. It didn't make it as big as Def Jam. Right? But there's always a story where Fly Ty tells a story where him, Andre Harrell, and Russell Simmons was living together and left rap. They had a problem apartment together, them three. He said he walked in one day. And what he saw made him move out. And he never lived with them again. What happened to Cold Chilling and Fly Tower? Why didn't he make it as big as Def Jam and Uptown Records? Let's move on. Cold Chillin' had MC Shan. MC Shan said he was offered to be the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And then he said it was some weird gay stuff that went on and that he wasn't with it and it went away. Then they gave it to Will Smith. And then Will Smith did what? Six degrees of separation. They took the wholesome image of a young boy that moved from the ghetto to the suburbs. Heterosexual boy and made, well, they didn't make us, but we all fell in love with this character. And we all adapted to this character and we follow him because he's one of us from hip hop. And then he turns around and boom, he's doing the gay scene with a dude. 
what does that do to part of the people that idolized him and were fan of, of him? It makes them want to try it as well. Just like you want to drink Ciroc. You wasn't drinking Ciroc before, Puffy. Ciroc been around. Shakita Hamilton, thank you, love. Appreciate the donation. Yo, watch this. Look at this, y'all. This is what year Sirac came out. Y'all see that? Puff don't own Ciroc. He's just the mascot. Puff didn't get Ciroc into his hands into 97. This thing was four years old before Puff got his hands on it. So... I say that to say that they can influence you to do whatever if you idolize or you are a fan of somebody. Can y'all remember any of y'all drunk Ciroc or seen it, noticed it on the shelf before Diddy started promoting it? I know Smirnoff was there. I know Hennessy was there. I know Belvedere, that Belvedere Grey Goose was there. Moet was there. Can you tell me you knew that Ciroc was on the shelf in 2003 before 2007 when Puff started endorsing it? It was there. It was there. So when you got somebody that's a brand, And they do it, you influence the audience to do it. Same thing with Queen Latifah. How many years, how many, how many of y'all ever heard Queen Latifah say she was a lesbian? I'll wait. How many of y'all ever seen Queen Latifah? publicly with a girlfriend like the Brad do right now. I'll wait. But her whole career, she's been uh to her whole, her audience, a heterosexual woman. But when it was time for her to go to the next level, she played what? A lesbian and set it off. And still to this day, have you ever seen her publicly with a woman? Like the brat is now? You never even seen brat until recently, even though you may know. But for when, when when Queen Latifah gets on the screen and all the girls that love to see her do a lesbian scene, she may influence some people to become a lesbian.
Did Jay Z make niggas stop wearing jerseys and told people to wear button ups? K Monet, thank you, appreciate you. Right? Did Jay Z tell everybody, yo, dead the jerseys, wear button ups? Was button ups in in the stores before Jay Z said that? Did they have button ups before Jay Z said that? Thank you. So when they see you have influence, they will come and holler at you because they know they can make you do, make other people do things that they want you to do. If Jay-Z came out the closet and was say he was gay, you know how many niggas, street gangster niggas will come out and be gay? Cause Jay-Z did it. I don't care, the nigga Hov is gay. The nigga Hov is gay. So what? The nigga Hov is gay. I'm telling you what would happen. If Jay-Z came out right now is gay, you will see a overflow of homo thugs out here like no other, yo. I'll put my life on that one. If Jay-Z came out as gay, I'm telling you, every nigga that is at that Rock Nation brunch will be like, yo, I'm gay too. Where do I sign up? And that nigga started passing out chains with, with penises on it. Niggas is rocking it. You don't know about that, Rob? You don't know about these jigaboos, then. I'm telling you. If Jay-Z came out gay right now, even Puff. If Puff just came out right now and said, yo, I'm gay. I don't care. I'm gay. I'm guaranteeing you there's going to be a lot of niggas in hip-hop that's going to say, all right, yeah, nigga, me too. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So with Bam Bada, Russell, Rick Rubin, Andre Harrell, all allegedly supposed to have lived this lifestyle, right? Look where all they labels went. Look where Fly Tie label went with Cold Chilling. He ain't get that far, did he? Maybe NYC, but they don't have no pull in the South. Who don't have no pull in the South? Look, the South made the gay lifestyle flamboyant. It wasn't New York. Maybe the early New York with Soul Sonic Force and them niggas dress, dressing like that. But once the streets had hip hop, and Calif New York streets had California hip hops, and West Coast had California had hip hop, and the Midwest had hip hop, and Miami had hip hop. Prior to that, until the South, the Atlanta had it. It didn't get homophied out until then. That's when niggas was comfortable in our era. Wearing dresses and wigs and, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Andre 3000, CeeLo, Young Thug, um, they, 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 they made it more super feminine. It wasn't, Nas and them niggas wasn't wearing no dresses. 
Lil Wayne wasn't wearing no dress. All that came later. Andre 3000 was very eccentric. He did the white wigs and all that other stuff. But CeeLo wore a, a, a straight up wedding dress. Like niggas wasn't doing that. Melly Mel was not wearing no wedding dress. I'm sorry. KRS1 was not wearing no wedding dress. Chuck D was not wearing no wedding dress. Uh, the X Clan was not wearing no wedding dress. Jay Z, Biggie. I don't care what niggas secret lifestyle was. They was not wearing that blatantly in in the uh the labels in New York had dudes in New York City wilding. All right, well, them labels in New York had them niggas in. And in other places wilding too. Cause you're not catching prodigy in a dress, core mega in a dress. No. Sorry. You wouldn't even catch Buster Rhymes in the dress, I don't think. You're not catching Birdman in the dress. Certain niggas just ain't doing certain things, yo. Imagine Rock him wearing a dress. It still wouldn't be hard. Yeah, it's the odd, nigga. Yeah, nigga, it's the odd. Yo, fix my slip, nigga. <laughs> Been a long time since I left you. Without a nice girdle to step to. Picture that. No. No. DMX Eva. Yo, dog. Look at this dress. Nigga. What? I'm ready to walk down the aisle, nigga. Did you stomach? What? I don't need no girdle. Uh. Oh, man, look at the detail of this. Just, yo, nigga, hold it back up. Nigga, don't let it drag on my Thames, nigga. Like, come on, no, 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 no. No. Sorry. I'm sorry. Now, maybe the, like, homeboy in Chicago, like, that sign of Rock Nation, what was this nigga name? Let me show you a picture. Oh. What is the name of that goddamn video? Oh, 
this dude here, the Rock Nation cat. Y'all know this guy? Rock Nation guy. See what they do to us? Vic Mensa. Not only is he wearing, is he in drag, he's wearing a Confederate flag. Is what they do to us. This is what they do to us. Don't tell me y'all didn't know about this. Come on, y'all didn't know about this? Why would a man have to do this? This is what I keep telling y'all. One May Day, good looking love. R.I.P. Black. Uh, Y'all tell me y'all never seen this. Like, why why would Rock Nation co-sign this? But you won't let them stream a, a, a little Uzi Vert concert, but y'all let them put this out. And this kid didn't start off like this. He started off as like he was really an activist for his people in Chicago. And look what they did to him, man. Oh, yeah, Eminem. Yeah, he wore a dress. Yeah. I see Eminem get nuts on his face. And uh, MTV. It's like. Why would they do this to us, y'all? Why? And then y'all yeah, be looking at me crazy when I tell you that these people come at you sideways and want you to do some strange things for you to get to the executive level. But there's always somebody that's going to do it. There's always somebody that's going to do it. That's Vic Mensa. This is crazy, yo. You know what? Let's watch this.
I don't think this is the video. Anyway, that ain't the video. I can't find it. I don't know the name of it, but I just say that to say, man, there's a long list of artists that became famous, that became influential, that had to meet these people like myself, and they hit you with these inde indecent proposals, and you got to make a choice. You know, but when you look at the history of it, of the, the found founding fathers, if that was their sexuality, and we all come up under this thing to make it, and these people are at the top, and this is their sexuality. And you got nigga, men like me that's attractive. You got beautiful women. And you got to come all up through these people that's already, before we even really into sex like that, they already had an alternate lifestyle. And we coming up and we meeting these people. And to get past these people, you got to look like Vic Mensa. So when we look at it today and we ask, why is it so gay? Why, where did all this come from? It's because the founding fathers and the people of power, these people probably got broken by the people up there. You know, just, you know, and this is where we at today is, this was their lifestyle all along. Most of the people that's behind the scenes in the industry, whether you know they get down like that and they never came forth publicly and said it, you know, like I use like uh, MC Light as an example. I was in love with MC Light my whole goddamn life life. Like, I'm stuck in clubs as a kid to see her in 87, 88. Thought that was going to be my girlfriend. I didn't know the whole time, most of her career, my career, that she was a lesbian. We, She's never said it publicly, but even when I was in the streets, I used to go re-up on the 141st in Amsterdam. I used to always, she had a girlfriend right there. And I used to always see her when I was going to re-up a lot. I used to see her. And um, it just blew my mind. It just blew my mind. But, you know, even to today, she has never came out like Brad did, you know, more recently. As well as there's plenty of other artists out here like that, actresses, actors, Athletes, it ain't just hip hop, y'all. It's a bunch of uh dudes in the NBA, even though they married, they with the same stuff these these dudes is as the, the same as these actors, even though they married, actresses, even though they may be married to a man, they may be a stone cold lesbian now or. May have been the whole marriage or bisexual. Do you think? Do you think Little Nas X song featuring Nas was made before Little Nas X came out? It was. It's no hell Nas would have did that song after he came out. I'm not saying Nas is homophobic or anything, but if Nas would have did that song after this nigga uh, kissed a man on stage or or had sex with let or had sex with the devil or did this jail scene, Nas would have never did that. Never.
Yeah, so like I said, in NBA, actors, comedians, this is why you see, you know, Kevin Hart got to put on a dress if he want to be a multi-million dollar box office star. Will Smith got to put on a dress. Jamie Foxx. Again, it just goes on and on in hip hop. They got they got hip hop dudes doing it now. And it, it's just ultimately this is what it is. The forefathers was already in that lifestyle. You got all of us coming up, being brought up different by our mothers and fathers to be men and women. These people wanted to break us for a better sake of getting to the next level. We need to know that you cool with me and this guy in meetings and secret parties and retreats and all kinds of F meetings that you could be in a room with us and be cool with uh, Jay-Z sitting on Russell Simmons' lap or Leo Cohen sitting on Jay-Z lap. I'm not saying that happened. I'm just saying, would you, would you be comfortable with that if you walked in that room? MC Light is divorced already. Sorry to update you. Um, would you be comfortable with that? Would you be comfortable if you walked in the room and you seen Megan and Beyonce kissing? Or would you run out and tell it to the blogs? Because if you run out and tell it to the blogs, then you're not you're not a part of what they're doing. So when y'all say the gays run in, in the entertainment industry, they don't run it. They was already gay when they, before they even popped off. They just implicated their lifestyle into the business. And for all of us that became successful in the business, that wanted to advance in the business or get into these secret rooms, you have to be what they was with. And if you're not what they with, then it's just going to be harder for you. I seen Nori talk about that uh, in in some interview. Illuminati. Oh yeah, that's right? brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, oh, shout out to Matt Right now, right now, right now. Okay, okay. They got the niggas with the handshakes. They doing this shit for battle rap. Right, so okay. it made me look at like, damn, was a lot of people wrongfully like shitting on a lot of the guys. Like I seen, you know, people make Jay in Illuminati. All these people in the Illuminati, right? Yeah. But then I look back like, damn. So these it's guys didn't work hard. They didn't become successful on yeah, their own. The, they didn't do the, none of this shit. Oh. And we've seen you on Vlad. You spoke about it, this yeah. and the third, and things like that. Yeah. But is it an unfair thing to put on, yeah, it's on people? Yeah, thing. Because, of, of course, does it exist? Maybe it's, it's something like that. But at, at the end of the day... Because I don't believe none of it now. I don't, I don't now either. Level. The further I got, the further I got, I don't believe it none now neither. But right. I did believe it at one point. I did... You know, I I was a post. I was where a person asked me, yo, such and such. And Why won't Nori tell us who the person was? I'm willing to bet it was either Leo Cohen or Kevin Lyles. Probably definitely Leo Cohen. Listen to him. Approach. I was where a person asked me, yo, such and such. And I was just like, nah, like, you know. I was approached with such and such. With such and such is. Can I suck you off? Or will you will you pipe me? Come on, Nari. Come on, man. Don't do it to me, Nari. And I was just like, nah, like, you know. Such and such. Like, what do you like mean, yo, man? you know, because 
at the end of the day, we, you probably make it to where you make it on your own. Right. But a lot of people will offer you something to, to sustain that. On the way. And I, at that moment, this was, this was, I don't know if it was that person or if this was the whole entity that came with it. Mm -hmm. But I was offered something and I just wasn't with it. But when they said, good luck, young man, you're on your own. And I never went platinum since. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so. Um, what did they offer you? They were just like, you know, you walk this way or you you, you come this way. and, and That's weird. Did they ask was, about like sacrifices or something? Nah, I didn't go that far. Like, I was just like, yo, I was just like, all right, cool. I'm going to go this way. And they, they, that was their exact word. What yeah. impact did they sell you on? But did they say, hey, we can do such and such and such? Nah, they didn't. It wasn't, no, it it wasn't like that. that. It I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't really wasn't allowed. I, yeah. If that was the case, it, it really wasn't allowed. Mm -hmm. And... and well, maybe I was bugging. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The thing about it was, Nigga, you wasn't I, did, I did never go platinum again. <laughs> I, did, <laughs> I did never go platinum again. So, I, so who y'all think Nori was talking about? Because he knows exactly who he was talking about. And he was definitely at Def Jam at that point. So, clearly, who was Nori talking about? Leo or Kevin Lyles? And I was just like, at the end of the day, because I don't believe none of it now. I don't. Like, I don't now either. The further I got, the further I got, I don't believe it none now either. But right. I did believe it at one point. I did, you know, I I was approached. I was where a person asked me, "Yo, such and such," and I was just like, "Nah, like." That's hypocritical for him to say he don't believe it and he experienced it. I'm not gonna say nothing more than that. I'm not going to say nothing more than that. I'm not going to say nothing more than that. But he experienced it, so he knows it's real. So to, to say that he don't believe it today, how don't you believe something today that already happened to you? Why would you say you don't believe it today? Was where a person asked me, yo, such and such. And I was just like, nah, like, you know. Such and such, like, what like you mean, yo, man? you know, because at the end of the day, we, you probably make it to where you make it on your own. Right. But a lot of people will offer you something to, to sustain that on the way. And I, at that moment, this was, this was, I don't know if it was that person or if this was the whole entity that came with it. Mm -hmm. But I was offered something and I just wasn't with it. But when they said, good luck, young man, you're on your own. And I never went. Who, who does that? Do, do a black person sound like they say, good luck, young man? Or that sound like, Nori, you come over here, you go to these doors, Nori. You come with me, or Nori. I take you far, Nori. You, you know, you're not gonna make it on your own, Nori. You're not gonna make it on your own, Nori. Come over here, Nori. Come on, Nori. You come on. What? Hell no, nigga, I'm super thug, nigga. I ain't no, nigga. Nori, you, you're gonna be on your own. Good luck, young man. Does that sound like Leo Cohen to you? Or Kevin Lyles? It's somebody at Def Jam. Clearly, it's somebody at Def Jam. I don't see Kevin Lyles saying, good luck, young man. That sounds like a sarcastic white man. Like, oh, fuck you. Uh, dismissal. Good luck, young man. I'm just assuming, allegedly, this, that, and other, that it may be this guy. But I'm willing to bet that it's somebody at Def Jam that gave uh, Nori that, that proposal. Believe that. And he got a second win, Daddy, with Dream Champs. He did, you know, made it successful twice. I don't know why you don't believe in it now. It still exists, brother. Nori, it still exists. Trust me, brother. It, it, didn't, it didn't stop after they came for you, brother. It still exists. I'm watching these artists today. I see it. Yeah, I can't hide it if you if you really know what's up. You can't hide it. But um, you know, the rumors of Dr. Dre, you know, it it, it, it just don't stop. It just don't stop. You know, I feel like these people in power, 
was already living a lifestyle and they broke a lot of our favorite artists by giving them that proposal to move in advance. And we've seen plenty of them have done it. If you put on the dress, you did it. It ain't no goddamn question. Ain't no man putting on no goddamn dress for no reason. You got to be in the club. I'm not saying you may not be in the gay club. You might be in the evil club. But if you are sitting here trying to influence young boys to be girls, you are a part of that agenda. I'm not talking about the boys that was naturally born that way and they've been feeling that way all their lives. I'm talking about you hip-hop niggas. You comedians like Kevin Hart who got sons that wear a dress for comedy but to inspire men to be feminine are the ones I'm talking to. Your sexuality is your sexuality. But if you're running around here with a wife and kids and you're supposed to be a man, why can't you be a man throughout your whole career? Why when you get on the screen or you get on the song or in the music video, you, you uh, You are trying to influence our youth because we already uh, are grown and can make decisions on our own. And y'all can influence adults because I see uh, Beyonce influence y'all women to do all types of shit. I done seen Beyonce make y'all leave niggas for cheating. Beyonce said she's irreplaceable. It's over between us. Get out of here. And Jay-Z over here just getting busted left and right and Beyonce don't go nowhere. But you leaving your man because he cheated on you because Beyonce told you to. And she's still in her goddamn relationship. Yeah, okay. That's all I got to say for the night. I think I said enough. Choke no joke. Put your yeah. shout outs on the screen. You know what Choke it no is. joke. Whatever city, your business, whatever you know it, what is, it is, on the screen, your Instagram. Let's go, let's go. 2020, rich niggas, money funny. We got killer bees and I lost my honey. My little sex master, yeah, she was a distraction. To my mathematics, then Corona happened. The government capping on what's really happening. Rock Nation signing niggas that's out here ratting. And Jay's the captain of the ship? Ain't this a bitch you keep his sign and snitch? We lost Andre and Rich, life's a bitch Can't have a funeral, no matter if you rich or poor Overpopulated at morgues Funeral homes, bodies all on the floor No food in stores, no me no more These the last days if you never prayed Have faith, all sort of illicit days Yo, it's tough when you see Puff rock a hoodie with his baby mama hanging from a crook, you know what it is. Oh, and Nikki done turned a whole bunch of little boys into Bobs. She inspired so many little boys to be gay. Nicki Minaj, she is the queen of turning little boys into girls. Let's go, let's go. 2020, rich niggas, money funny We got killer bees and I lost my honey My little sex master, yeah she was a distraction To my mathematics, then Corona happened The government capping on what's really happening Rock Nation signing niggas that's out here ratting And Jay's the captain of the ship? Ain't this a bitch you keep his sign and snitch? We lost Andre and Rich, life's a bitch Can't have a funeral, no matter if you rich or poor Overpopulated at morgues, funeral homes
floors, bodies all on the floor. No food in stores, no me no more. These the last days if you never prayed. Have faith, all sort of illicit days. Yo, it's tough. When you see Puff rock a hoodie with his baby mama hanging from a cross, you lost. Damn, you told the CEO on the gram he was a handsome man. That's sexual harassment in front of millions of fans. You made five on the scram like Sunday Letitia. Joseph don't leave, Mary and Jesus. Sides, self pleasing, some sneak thieves. If we were kids, you call them flat leavers. They use you, don't need you. It's birth you, they see you. Cross you, then be ya, curve you and flee ya Niggas wanna be you, until they see you They idolize you, like you in the case Nigga, you know who got punched in the face In the A on stage, or any place A nigga like me, never retire like Mace And don't even care if the church is the escape Last real nigga alive, amongst your face Y'all big bad, no frost in the heart Come out, Epstein flight log is out And tell us, what that spirit cooking about? Head to head with a satanist and niggas and dummies The power of the dark side block me out That's why I'm blacking, get it in any sport trick That's why you the non-factor 6 9 keep acting like you ain't acting You wasn't flagging, in the court yapping That tough guy on the gram was just blabbing I'm the king of New York, at y'all niggas I'm laughing Magic Plaza Yo, 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 action, nigga Magic Plaza It's the king of New York Choke, no joke We here now You know what it is Eden Wall, stand up Good night, y'all. Y'all have a good night. You go and brush your teeth and you say your prayers tonight, okay? Choke no joke. I'll be back tomorrow at noon with the entertainment school, all right? You know, we got some more things to learn. One love, one love. Shout out to the moderator, his squad. Appreciate y'all. The keys, keys. Much love to you, too. Appreciate you. One love. Oh, David, you missed it.